So people tend to forget a lot of people, you know, get away with not looking at the teaks very thoroughly, but the teaks are where and what our where we get what our students need to know and the things that they need to be able to do. And it is the Texas Administrative Code. It's the law that they get these things um, in our classroom. This knowledge and skills at each of the content area, the Amaris has um, a, a goal and you're gonna see what PE's uh, goal is. And, and all through, there is this vertical alignment, right? Building, 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 and it goes further because then we go to middle school, what we were just talking about, four through eight, and then we continue on to high school and we're going towards a certain end in each content area. We're gonna look specifically right now, you know, what, what the goal that the Texas legislation said RPE classes should achieve. And then the knowledge and skills as they move through the grade levels that they should be acquiring, that they should be being instructed on, modeled to, given ample myriad opportunities to practice um, those skills over and over and over again um, before they leave your classroom. So let's take a look, beginning with the first, kindergarten. These are the little babies. They are so incredibly cute. I'll give you just a small anecdote. I never taught um, K through six. I always taught 12, um, not 12, uh, seven through 12. Um, I, I was, I am certified in 438 as well, but I never wanted to do the lower levels. The, the, I have five children myself. And so I just wanted to be with like the high school students, you know, analyzing poetry. Obviously I romanticized that picture, you know, it wasn't quite what I expected and it was so much fun, but I never did these um, lower grades. And now that my kids are getting older, my, my youngest two are in first and second. And I'm like, my older ones are like going to college now and, you know, starting their lives. Um, I'm wanting to go back and try it again because they're, they're so very cute. So we're dealing with our babies and each of these kids, kindergartners, first graders, second graders, third graders, fourth, fifth, and then you'll have to check, um, you know, middle school for the sixth grade teaks. Um, each of these levels has particular, um, things that need to be achieved, um, and supports that are necessary based on their development, right? Where are they developmentally, physically, especially physically, right? Our kindergartners are not going to be super coordinated. We're not going to start any, you know, basketball games uh, with them. Uh, the balls are too heavy very often. They can't reach. The, I mean, there's like logistics things. So we do different things at different grade levels. It's the same thing in PE. Um, though also cognitively and what the things that we learn and that we talk about um, as we go on, we become more complex in our instruction. Sorry, guys. I get um, constant. Uh, I'll. I don't even know where to get. I'll check right now. I'm sorry to um, uh, bother you. Um, it doesn't show me your screen. I'm not sure how to fix it. It doesn't show you my screen. Oh my goodness, that's terrible. Let me stop share and then restart. You haven't seen anything? Uh, no. Oh my. And I just goodness. noticed right now because when I minimized it, it showed me, but when I maximize it, it doesn't show me. Oh no. I was able to see it. No. Everything. What about now? Yes, I can see it now. You are sharing screen. What does it say? Okay, great. Yes. Uh, everyone can see it. I am so sorry you were unable to see it. You didn't see any of my drawings. Oh my goodness. I was actually <laughs> doing an okay job. I'm sad. Uh, okay, so this is a really, really great opportunity. Do you see, like, if ever you can't see anything on a Zoom or whatever, please don't feel like you're interrupting me. You just, like, super shut me up really quickly and say, I can't see anything. Um, and, and the kids are worse than I know and I know how you feel because I would probably done the same thing but we want our kids to be vocal with their needs um and so we at the beginning part especially with our students that are um, English language learners and when they're babies we're gonna have to be super checking for understanding they're not at a level yet where um they're gonna feel super okay voicing um 
their needs and academically or skill wise to you. Um, so you really need to build a classroom atmosphere where discussing and feedback and positive reinforcement and bully free zone is available for students to flourish. So anytime you need um, something, you just pop, just pipe on up. So we're going to look at kindergarten. And I'm sorry you weren't able to see it, but hopefully when I upload the video, you can watch the first part of it and you can see what I was showing, like the other, where the other teaks are located for you. Hi, nice Sam. Thank you. All right. So as I said, every single content area has a goal and it remains pretty constant. Um, even if <clears throat> within the grade levels, they focus on a different thing or the topic of the course is you know more specific and different, the goal is still the same. Physical education is the foundation of a well-balanced curriculum. The foundation. We can't have math and science and social studies and everything else without having physical education in the mix. It's necessary, it's foundational. And I believe that it is. It is, an, um, it is an academic subject with a planned and sequential K through 12 curriculum based on national standards for education. Physical education provides cognitive content and instruction designed to, let's highlight some things. I'm just gonna change my highlighter color to orange. Because my littlest, who is a first grader, loves orange. So, um, provides cognitive content and instruction designed to develop motor skills, knowledge. This is an important one. Behaviors for physical activity and physical fitness. Um, Supporting schools to establish daily physical education um, can provide students with the ability and confidence to be physically active for a lifetime. This is from Centers for Disease Control. Okay, so physical education is designed to develop motor skills, knowledge, and behaviors for active living, physical fitness, sportsmanship. This is where the this is where we're getting into the more specifics of the goals. Self efficacy how effective are you self are you monitoring yourself for improvement for uh efficiency efficacy and this is a big one guys this is a big responsibility that the pe um you know instructors have building that social emotional intelligence it, it goes into sportsman life it actually goes into self-efficacy right if you have a high social emotional intelligence you're you're going to be somebody who is a good sportsman <laughs> you're going to be uh you know cognizant of how other people feel uh, feel you know uh, aware of others not just spatially you know space wise but like emotion wise feelings um and how how your actions might affect them these are major goals for each of the uh, grade levels. Physical education addresses the three domains of learning, cognitive skills related to movement, affected skills related to feelings and attitudes about movement, and psychomotor skills related to manual and physical skills in movement. Movement literacy, we want them to be like, knowledgeable of all sorts of sports and ways that they can be active not just sports because like I don't typically think of bowling as a sport but it's active and I've been sore after like a good night of bowling you know so it's, it's like a cardiovascular activity and so getting the students to understand the depth and breadth of and importance of physical activity is one of the main goals and so after each of these Yamaris and Philip, after each of these, I would do which uh, what is known as a reading strategy, chunking the text, where you just briefly after you read it and highlight, 
say what it's mostly about in your own words. Like this goal is talking about like movement, feelings about being active and them having the knowledge. Next paragraph is going to be mostly about um, developing lifetime of wellness. Well, that was what I was talking about before. Physical literacy can be described as the ability to move with competence and confidence and acquire knowledge and understanding and, va and to value and take responsibility for engagement in a wide variety of physical activities in multiple environments. That's what physical, what, that's what it means to be physically literate. You could play basketball and baseball. And we want the kids to have that physical literacy where they, like, they could in adulthood join a, a basketball league or a baseball league. And we want them to do those sort of things, right? Um, okay. Research shows physical education is important to the development of a whole child, development of the whole child. It really is. And it increases a lifetime of wellness. Um, and, and that's if it's done correctly, if it's done in such a way that is supportive and like it, this bully free place and where the coach pays attention to skill level and instead of taking it up a notch and making some people feel sort of you know left behind doing reteach or giving a constructive feedback corrective feedback with modeling and other things to, to bolster um students confidence and and self-esteem or, or feeling towards particular movements um my second grader does not like pe she is very brilliant. She's in GT. She's <laughs> when I was younger, apparently my parents said that I I said I don't like to sweat, which I don't, not for free or for anything. You know what I'm saying? Like if I, I was the tennis coach at the school that I taught at for a long time and, and I was a cheerleader and I played tennis myself and I did volleyball. So I'm okay with sweating if I'm like working for it. I don't want to be somewhere like just trying to exist and be sweating. That is like what I meant. But my daughter also <laughs> has those feelings and she's just not into, but I think it's maybe she hasn't found her sport. And, and from what I understand of the PE program, as it results to the way it was in, incrementally brought back after COVID, um, she doesn't, she just doesn't like it as much. You know, it, there's not, I guess it's not like as interactive or um, so I'm hoping that that will change and that they'll sort of bring in new games, new skills so that she can start thinking it's all about sweating and, and, you know, just getting your heart beat up and having fun. So, um, we want to get them, um, you know, of course she would never say this to her PE teacher. She would like rather, you know, like walk through coal on hot coal before she would ever say such thing, but she, she just doesn't. And, and that's a something that you will have with students and <laughs> they're going to like, you're going to have to find ways to motivate them and make it um, fun. Or if they, um, you know, their skill level is, is below. Um, and maybe that is a reason why they aren't having fun or wanting to participate, but always trying to, to get that buy-in from the students. The Association of Supervision and Curriculum Development and the National Academy of Medicine Sports uh, support the belief that physical education taught at a developmentally appropriate level, and that's what the TEKS are, developmentally appropriate level of instruction all the way through. They're vertically aligned all the way K through 12 to be building blocks as the students move through their different grade levels, as they are developing as students, cognitively, physically, emotionally, uh, maturity-wise. So, um, and we have to take all of those variables and all of those areas in which they can be different in their development, right? <laughs> like, but uh, people really don't understand just how much teachers do to do a good job. Like, if teachers are doing an amazing job, that's it's hard. We're dealing with human beings. There are variables. There are different skill levels. We're trying to make them achieve same high level expectations on grade level across the board, regardless of skill level, you know, 
um, you know, language proficiency, disability, and otherwise. So um, making sure, and it's possible because there are amazing teachers doing amazing things every day with very diverse populations, but they know their students, they plan for their students, like they, they take into account who their students are, what works for them, um, and where they are at their skill level, what where they need to go, and then finding the supports and implementing them throughout their lessons so that they can achieve the different standards that are listed here. Because remember, the TEKS, um, by law, that is what the students must get out of your classroom. So we're looking at physical education in kindergarten, but if this were English language arts and reading, that every reading teacher has to make sure. Like, and, and so if the state wanted to be really terrible, which I mean, I wouldn't wholly put it past them, you know, to punish teachers in that way. But if they wanted to punish teachers with really low scores based on assessments, like the standardized, not all content areas are tested, which is why they can't do it probably. Um, based on your scores, if you don't have really amazing scores, they could say you're not fulfilling your, you know, you you sort of take an oath when you take your certificate um, that you are going to do these things that at each grade level and that you are going to abide by a particular ethics that you know particular things and if, and know how to do them and instruct your students to do them. So um, very important that we read through these deeply. So what I'm doing is reading through them and then in my own words, in a couple of words, you need to say it um, sort of, oh, let me just raise this a little bit, in your own words. Okay, um, so this is the unimportant part. We have physical education standards. They're categorized into five strands that are of, very important, equal, where's my handy dandy drawing thing? equal importance and value, five strands. That means they deserve attention every day, all day from each of them, right? So the TEKS, the knowledge and skills will be um, categorized or organized in five strands, but there is not one that rises above the other. They're all integral um, and important. So practicing of them important as well. Movement patterns and movement skills strands movement patterns and the actual skill of the movement. The stu students have to do it. Guides the physically literate student in the development of fundamental movement patterns. So we're starting from K and, and teaching them correct movement. I mean, you could really hurt yourself later on if you're doing incorrect movements in some of the sports that you play. And so it is kind of important that the students begin early on. Spatial, very important, and body awareness and rhythmic activities. Then you have, um, actually, I'm going to, then you have um, performance strategies. And that guides the physically literate student in utilizing game concepts activities, outdoor and recreational pursuits, the games portion of it. Then you have physically literate demonstrating skill and mechanics. During an activity, during an activity, physically moving and doing the things that we discussed in the other strand. <clears throat> Analyzes data. We also have the student recognizing correlation between nutrition, hydration, and physical activity. Very, very important. Students understand the importance of hydration, the importance of eating, 
you know, uh, in junior high, I have been on a lot of junior high campuses, especially, I mean, no, it was still happening in the late 2015 um, and 2006, 2007. But uh, junior high students, girls uh, in the Valley, um, thinking that they um, wanted to be like stickly thin and like not eating and then going to like volleyball games or going to like cheerleading practice or track and they're like essentially starving themselves and then going and doing all of this physical activity um, and like fainting or getting really sick. So um, the counselors had to have this whole like conversation about weight and like, PE coaches and coaches, I was the cheerleading sponsor at the time, had to talk about like self-worth and identity and the importance of, you know, nutrition, hydration, and in if you're going to be doing these physical activities, you cannot go in there not having eaten and try to tumble on the football field. That's preposterous. Um, even if you could had the energy for it, you are going to get dizzy and you will fall. Like it's, it, you will hurt yourself. It's not, it's dangerous. So, but, but social pressures, I mean, they knew this already, obviously this is not the first time they're hearing this and they knew it was bad because it was sort of kept a secret. Um, but I'm telling you, this has happened. I've worked at, um, four junior highs, um, two, three junior highs, two in the Valley, and then one in San Antonio. And um, something similar regarding weight at the junior high, regarding like a bullying, not eating during physical activity um, has gone on. And that's something really important for that middle group that we talk about, you know, self-awareness and um, the awareness of others. And, um, you know, just the understanding of be what it means to eat healthy as opposed to like deprive yourself of necessary nutrition. And you wouldn't have that conversation with like kindergartners, you know? Um, but man, you know what? I think PE teachers need to start having them more frequently because as I said, my daughter is in the second grade and she's my fourth child. I have a senior um, who is my second child. She's a senior this year. She's on the swim team and she's like a student. Um, she's in honor society. She was on varsity swim, um, captain this year, varsity swim four years. And so she's very fit. And um, like maybe not a, a month ago, my second grader was um, putting something on like a leotard of some sort. And she said that she was fat. And I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> like, You don't have an inch of fat on. And she said, no, look when I said, and I said, mama, that's preposterous. Everybody has that. Like you are perfect the way you are. You eat well, you know, um, she's also the one that doesn't like to do physical activity. So, but I don't know if like things that she's seen, but it was so striking because I'd never, I mean, that's not something that my older daughter ever said. And I certainly never say stuff like that about myself or any other um, women. So I don't, it was kind of shocking to me a little bit. So um, maybe the conversations that we thought need, didn't need to start, you know, uh, need to start sooner because it seems as though children are unfortunately caring about stuff like that and and need to be explained as to like obviously I took the time to do it myself as every parent should however not every parent is there to have conversations with their with their children and um to under you know for them to be able to have a sounding board and someone to talk to about the way that they're feeling and or asking for clarification like that so we need to be that person so uh, quality, oh wait, I, I skipped one, last one. The social emotional health strand incorporates working with others, very important. Responding to class expectations, responding well to them, knowing what the expectations are to be able to be here and you have to be here. So, um, and, and being able to manage oneself, 
self-management skills. Um, Lifetime Wellness Strand engages students, this last Lifetime Wellness, engages students in physical activity for the purposes of self-expression, enjoyment, and challenge. After I had my last child, I was diagnosed with fibromyalgia and just have not been myself since. And, you know, I was active and uh, was the sports coach and would do the exercises with my um, my teams, like the running and like play matches against them and do drills with them. Um, and so it it was really hard for me not to like, I, I would like to go play tennis again, but I'm, I'm afraid I might hurt myself and sort of like not, um, because I, I, you know, after cleaning the house, I, I, my body will be out of, out for the count for a couple of days. So, um, but I, I miss it so very much that like challenge, that physical challenge, that enjoyment of like, a great serve or a good round volley back and forth, back and forth, and then finally smashing it in. There's like real enjoyment that comes from that. And yes, I sweat, but like the skill that went on uh, that was needed in tennis and I found so much enjoyment of it. So hopefully I can get back to where I can play that because I, I certainly miss it. And I feel like I live with the exception of, um, you know, walking and parking far away whenever I do, you know, go to places, I don't have the physical activity that I used to in my life. And so I need to do that better. And we want our students to do that. And a lot of their parents don't do that. And so they're not going to do it if their parents are not going to go do it. Quality physical education programs include comprehensive cur curriculum, physical activity, so that they can practice their skills, safe policies, safety understanding, safe environment, physically and emotionally. I cannot have people making fun of other people as they're learning new skills. Not everybody is going to come out here and be an all-star and get the skill one off. Everybody learns differently. We all come with different prior knowledge, things we know, more experience, you might have a big brother that was been tossing balls to you all the time and you've been tossing back. That's why you're so good at it. You've had practice. Practice makes perfect. Having a safe place for students to make mistakes and, and be vulnerable enough to be corrected, to be emotionally sound, emotionally mature, to, to take feedback, corrective feedback, and not look at it as criticism. But so too, we have to be mindful of the feedback that we give the students instead of like, oh man, really you dropped it. Like, no, follow through all the way, all the way to the sky. You got to follow through so that it's not just, no, you missed it, but you missed it, but follow through next time. Give that corrective feedback, that spe specificity of feedback. Um, safe environment, qualified physical education stru uh, specialist instructing class, that's you guys, um, and student assessment, and do not use physical activity as a form of punishment, and unfortunately, that still gets done, it even gets done at the, um, you know, <laughs> the, the kids level, like, I still, like, they'll, my daughters will tell me we had to run laps because this group of kids didn't like behave, but like, that's where somebody, especially someone who's like very just minded and brilliant and, uh, you know, in GT, like she's just like anti running laps. And then if she's really practicing her hardest during the skills and blah, 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 and then gets punished with this physical education already, not wanting to like sweat, um, as she says, <laughs> Um, and maybe that's why, cause I went to class and, and we did sweat, like, I don't know. Anyway, um, the point is you don't want to use it as a punishment. And I know, especially in the sports, um, when you get to the, to the like older levels, certainly they're going to use it as a punishment, but never in kindergarten, 
um, you're, are you ever, certainly never an EC through six, are you going to want to make that a, a, a means of a leg of punishment? You sort of cut yourself at the knees by um, making it something that they don't like. And even if it's not overtly said, it's an association. I know I did wrong. I'm being punished. Now this pain is coming with it. And, and I, or this, um, you know, overexertion or whatever the punishment may be. Texas state outlaws, uh, state law, excuse me, outlines requirements that support these ex essential components in accordance with state law. Again, guys, these listed in our standards, our standards are the law and TEKS are the law. The physical education curriculum and instruction must be sequential. I'm going to change my highlighter so we can see that better. In sequence, developmentally appropriate for K through 12 and designed to meet the needs of all students, every single one of them. Students with disabilities, students at all level of, of ability and skill, all of them, not just the easy ones. You cannot just instruct the ones that come with skill and talent, you must instruct them all and help all to develop skills and keep that high level of expectation that are that is required. Um, so including students with disabilities and all physical ability levels, skill and physical um, levels. 50% of the physical education class, important again, must be used for actual student physical activity at any, at, at a moderate or vigorous intensity level which aligns with additional state requirements for a minimum number of minimum minutes, sorry, minimum number of minutes for moderate or vigorous physical activity in kindergarten uh, through grade eight. The required student to teacher ratio, which you should know, in a PE class, it's 45 to one. If you have larger numbers than 45, there must be another teacher. It is required, not only for supervision, but for safety reasons. You, you cannot supervise hundreds of kids if you're one person. I don't care how di diligent and amazing you are with classroom management, you are going to be distracted, Giving, you can't give feedback. Instruction cannot even take place. You're just going to be a person trying to make sure no one gets hurt at that point. Because if you take any sort of time to instruct, give feedback, redirect, model, um, that means you're not watching the other 90 kids that are <laughs> unsupervised while, while you're doing, um, you know, your attention is focused elsewhere. So you got to make sure the, that you have that proper supervision and safety in the physical education classes. Districts must identify how student safety will be maintained in that ratio uh, if that ratio is exceeded. So it shouldn't be. They have to figure out how to, how to do it and they have to do it quickly. You don't have to figure it out. The, t the district has to figure it out, but they must do it. And you should, and like you should complain if you have more than 45 in one class. Just say, listen, I don't want anyone to get hurt and for me to be sued because I didn't let you guys know I have 56 people in here. So if you want to send me an aid at the, and while you guys are hiring someone or whatever you got to do, um, I mean, and they might ignore you, but at least you have it on record that you brought it to their attention because that is the law that you should know. Um, state law requires the school districts and charter schools annually assess the physical fitness of students in grade three or higher who are enrolled in a physical education course. So they do do it, do it again in seventh grade. But and they do it actually at many grade levels now. And I, I don't see any um, sort of deterrent. I think it's called the PACER um, is the system that I've been seeing in the classes. Um, and I actually have a, an intern that I just finished with him last year. Um, but he he had um, 
he was just giving his pacer and they do particular activities. He was, his was at an elementary and it was, um, you know, I think like hopping on one foot. I think it was the younger level. So there were like particular like balance things and, um, or it might've been the third graders. I'm not sure. But in any event, by law, every PE um, starting at grade three, they have to measure, assess their ability to do moderate, rigorous uh, physical activity and skills. Access to age-appropriate physical education requirement is essential to quality instruction. Basic age-appropriate equipment for all students is imperative for the development of motor skills. Manipulative skills, we want them to be able to um, have better fine motor and manipulative skills and eventually becoming a physically literate lifelong learner. Without basic age-appropriate equipment, students will not have the necessary experiences to become physically literate lifelong learners. All equipment should be age-appropriate for the grade levels to be taught. The term age appropriate means that the equipment must include a variety of sizes, weights, textures to provide differentiated experiences is very important. As far as differentiated, um, students will need different size. You can't give the kindergartners the big size basketballs. We gotta have the smaller ones for them. Um, and different, um, you know, textures different weights for them to understand ideas of textures and weights and sizes, but also to be developmentally appropriate to their own size. Um, differentiated experience, different experiences to allow and provide for different experiences within your own classroom. We have diverse students. You are supposed to be planning for all of them. You're going to be doing one activity or several you know, of the same activities there. The way that you can differentiate is by providing them different ball sizes, different textures of ball, different weights for them to be able to utilize, possibly differentiate their experience and take a different path to success than another student who could use a larger ball. So that differentiation of instruction is provided via the, the resources that you have. Um, differentiative experience for various ages. Ability levels of students. Also, basic equipment for quality instruction includes, but is not limited to, the following lists. Sports balls, including fleece, foam, tennis, beach, volleyball, basketball, soccer balls, footballs, baseball, softballs, and unity balls, striking implements, including golf clubs, hockey sticks, bat batons, pool noodles, tennis rackets, racket. Oh my Lord. I could guarantee you that the junior high I worked at did not have all of these things. Like I can guarantee you. We didn't even have proper rackets to, to, to like, we didn't even have proper rackets for when they, for when the students took the tennis portion of their PE in junior high, they didn't have proper rackets to use because if any students like, uh, like on the tennis team, uh, forgot their racket, there was no way that we were going to be able to utilize. And so how well can the students really practice tennis in their PE classes, all of them, you know, six through eight, um, if they don't have the equipment. So pickleball pads, lollipop pad, wait, are those paddles, lollipop paddles? I think I'm having, oh, that's for your, let's see. Um, I don't know what a lollipop paddle is. I knew what a pool noodle was. So I'm going to look up lollipop paddle because that's what I do when I'm doing a deep dive. And that's what you need to do. I'm modeling for you how you must read this document. And you must read it carefully like it's the law because it is the law. So you're responsible. Um, you have to read every word of it. And 
you shouldn't just read it. You should read it for understanding. And in order to do that, you have to do that kinesthetic experience where you're writing down examples, looking things up and writing them down on the paper for understanding. So what was it? Was it pool noodles? No. What was it? Lollipop. Uh, what was it? Lollipop. Are they paddles? Oh, there they are. Lollipop paddles. That came up quick. Okay, okay, lollipop paddles. So let's see. Cool, so little athletes can pick up these uh, lollipop paddles, enjoy safe, fun games of table tennis, wiffle ball, badminton, or other, see this like meets those requirements for those other things, other activities. And this is that differentiation of instruction, right? So. Maybe not, maybe have one a real badminton thing, but also give them the option of using these um, for the younger kids. Um, different inches, different sizes, uh, and therefore table tennis and badminton. But let's see what activities you can utilize. And... I love yes. YouTube because teachers are amazing and they post the greatest stuff. So anytime you come across anything in your teaks or your standards where you're like, I can't explain what that is to someone in conversation, because that's how you know you know it, is if you could just explain it to someone. Um, if you couldn't sort of explain what that was, and I'll be able to explain uh, at least one activity involving lollipop paddles and what lolly lollipop paddles even are normally used for badminton and table tennis. So this is only uh, one minute and 38 seconds long. And um, I'm going to uh, play it for us. The striking game using our foam paddles. Um, foam paddles look like this. I use balls. I set up a game with a line in the middle. Each team sets up about nine to 10 cylinders or bowling pins on each side. And the game is simple. When I say go, they strike the ball off the ground and try to knock over the opposing team's uh, pins. If they do knock over the pin, they take it back to their side and set it up on their line. Now, with first graders and second graders, I also let them strike the ball out of their hands. So if they want to toss it up like a tennis serve or do an underhand um, strike with, their, with the uh, paddle, that's fine. It's okay, listen to the movements that he's practicing. He said overhand, underhand, tennis. So like he's actually doing many practicing of skills and allowing the students to achieve the objective, utilizing um, a, you know, a movement that is uh, comfortable for them. Well, but that's our game. Let's take a look at it in action. Paddle strikers ready? Go for it. See, now this is a fun activity I could totally get behind and not, not mind sweating. And the kids are not going to mind sweating if this were the type of activity that my daughter was doing in her class instead of running laps i guarantee you she would not complain about pe she would have fun this is fun and doing the skills and still moderate to rigorous physical activity remember 50 percent of that instructional time that the students have with you has to be um uh moderate to um uh what was it moderate to rigorous um rigorous would be the running of laps yeah. Encouragement. Music is really great for your classroom atmosphere, for timing, for motivation. Um, music is great. I've seen a lot of elementary um, invest in PA systems which is great. So you guys don't have to like be shouting um, because that's the way PE teachers have to like normally do it if they're talking with a big group of 45 or however many giving instructions. Um, obviously this class is a lot smaller than most classes. How many kids are playing this game? Um, so there is for instructional purposes, but you might have to take turns and have different teams and have kids sitting along the side or um, standing in line until their turn. 
um, Nice, great job. Oh, yeah. I don't know if they, I don't know if you looked at that, but I'm going to put add this to the PE playlist. Um, if I can. Well, why won't it let me? Hold on. And again, this is a striking game using our phone. I'm going to open it right now. And I am going to add. When the stakes are high at work, your tone matters. I didn't know. Lot, Normally, say advanced this. tone suggestions can help. Because when you write with just the right confident tone. Using our foam paddles. Let's just take a look because he looked like he had a lot. Pinball stuff. Um, uh, bucket ball. Oh, this is fun. Those slider things, this movement. Like, see, this movement is fun for the kids to to, to practice crossing skills and also <laughs> Good ball movement, good ball movement. Ball movement, progression of, of the court. <laughs> oh, inside the crease goes. So um, I would certainly, I don't know why I can't like add this guy, close captioning, setting, mini player, like add to playlist. I cannot do, that's bizarro. Okay, well, um. And let's go back to, there was another one, lollipop paddles, pink ball paddles, pickleball paddles, um, goals for various sports, including soccer, basketball goals, net and standards for a variety of sports, including volleyball, pickleball, badminton, and tennis, fitness related equipment, other basic equipment, including scarves, Bean bags, hula hoops, jump ropes, and scooters. We just saw a use of scooters, right? In that, um, this is what they mean, I believe, by the scooters. Forget what those are called. Um, they have a specific name. Um, oh, I wish he had it in the des description. Paddle pinball. Oh, it's pinball. That's so funny. Um, the kids are playing pinball with their paddles and trying to make it through the course. That's uh, cute. Um, lots of really great, um, you know, games for EC6 in this man's. Um, so I would certainly go and, and try to look up his name. It's called his Justin Cahill because I couldn't, I don't know why I can't save it in my um pe playlist it's very strange um okay so we also need um classroom management equipment including cones mats pennies see i don't know what that is either Poly spots, and those are the different colors with the spots that they had laid on the ground to show, like, where, oh, cones, mats, and does anyone know what a penny is? I do not. For sports. Oh, pennies, that, I guess, where you, where you pin. Um, so like where the goal would be, I guess, like to show pennies. I think they're the, to separate teams, just Oh, they're, they're not, the pennies. Uh, got it. They're the shirts, right? The little tank tops. 
no, it's not working. 